at this fire. I guess it's at Bethlehem Steel, the old Bethlehem Steel plant. It's as close as I can get. I've never seen so much smoke before in my life. I woke up this morning and I smelled something. Look at this fire. I guess it's at Bethlehem Steel, the old Bethlehem Steel plant. It's as close as I can get. I've never seen so much smoke before in my life. I woke up this morning and I smelled something. Hey guys, Tweelon Nugent with 7 Eyewitness News here. We're just on scene off of Route 5 here. Police are just now closing down, but I want to show you the fire that's going. This is at the Bethlehem Steel site. Take a look at just all the smoke spreading. The roof has now just caught on fire there. I want to zoom in and show you. The roof is now on fire at Bethlehem Steel. So before the fire was not visible from inside the building, but right now it is. There's all the coming down this way. We've got all the fire trucks coming this way. We don't know yet what the cause of this fire is. We don't know what's on fire, but as you can see here, the building itself is now on fire. This one, the little smokestacks on top that were previously not on fire about four minutes ago, now burning. Traffic here is still open, guys, but we are quickly moving in. grab a microphone here really quick for our photographer but I'm gonna show you what's happening here while I'm grabbing some gear here but again we are very close to this fire I want to say we're less than a block from it actually right now but as you can see traffic is still moving through here on Route 5 they're probably in the process of closing it because this is so close to the street here but we are very close to it um, I want to say we're less than a block but as you can see here lots of thick black smoke those flames are visible. Now the roof of the building is on fire there. Um, they haven't yet down closed any traffic. So Route 5, we still have continuously tons and tons of personnel coming here on scene. We arrived for so many of these people. I'm gonna move back here just so uh, everyone's streaming live right now so I don't want to get on their microphones but guys this is not a safe place to be if you are planning to take route 5 please do not <sighs> yeah if you drive uh, on route 5 please don't because this area should not be safe here I'm assuming um, that lots of these people that next to this site here are going to be evacuated very soon but it's still early here so this fire is just billowing all this thick smoke is heading in that direction downwind luckily of us right now but um this scene is just starting to be set up here by police and fire they haven't been able to close off the road yet since this fire happened so recently it's just growing so much here as you can see again i want to show you this roof now on fire of this warehouse the smokestacks on top billowing with smoke there and also caught on fire it wasn't like this just about we've been here for less than 10 minutes and this is how it's grown already but again all of these personnel coming on scene trying to control this as quickly as possible we don't know a lot of information about how this started what's on fire we won't know it for a little bit but take a look here guys just billowing thick smoke being pushed downwind this direction um, and a lot of traffic here being cut off as it should be because this is not safe now yeah we want to turn this way take a look here traffic is being rerouted right here so we're on the five it's being rerouted you're not going to be able to come down this way because you should not because this fire is very close to the street here so again not a lot of information at this point of what exactly is happening here but uh we do we do have a lot of personnel coming on scene here because this is a huge huge fire and traffic is now closed on route five um, we have ambulance oh i just heard an explosion so something in there burning a lot of noises now um, stuff popping and crackling in there so we do see on this side though they are starting to attack this fire we've got some hose lines going on the ladder trucks over here 
but again, very thick black smoke. We can hear some some rattling inside. They're probably breaking down some uh, walls trying to attack this fire right now. But this is all just What direction is this? This is south. South? South. Okay. Guys, no southbound traffic on Route 5. It's being redirected. So no southbound traffic on Route 5 at this point. But again, no, you can't come northbound either. I'm not sure where at northbound you'll have to be redirected from. But um, this is what it's looking like right now, guys. Not a lot of information still if you're just joining us. What you can see speaks for itself. All the personnel on scene here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go because we are going live in just a moment here. Oh, We're gonna. You got like 15 minutes. Okay, just a little bit. I wasn't sure what time it is. I can't see the clock. But uh, hey, let me come around here. Um. For our viewers, David, can you step over here for a second? Over here, come with me. Uh, for those that don't know, David's also a lieutenant in the Getzel Fire Department. Tell us what, you know, this black smoke, what does that usually mean? Usually means a lot of bad things burning. That's usually the main indicator. It could be a lot of number of things, but the most number one thing is black smoke usually means bad things burning. And the amount of it, what does that say to you? You're the, seeing a lot of it? I'm seeing a lot of fire. You can't really see from the Facebook Live video. Uh, a lot of fire coming from the top of the building, from the corners, from the eaves, from the, the, the peaks of the building, from all over the place. The inside of that building is probably got a ton of fire right now. It's coming out the top like that, coming out of the smokestacks. A lot of fire in that building right now. And so what is the best plan of attack here? Defensive. Nobody's going in there right now. At least not... I would be surprised if anybody was in there right now. They're just going to try and contain it, make sure it doesn't spread, make sure it doesn't get to any houses. In the streets nearby, they've already shut down Route 5, so don't try and go down Route 5. But they're just going to try and keep it from spreading beyond okay. where it is already. We're going to let David go back and be a photographer, but I just wanted to get a fire perspective in here right now for you guys, um, just because we don't know a lot at this time. So... So right here is Adams and Route 5. So this neighborhood, I'm sure, um, going to be evacuated soon because as you can see here, this fire is huge. It's growing, it's billowing. Route 5 is closed to all traffic. I'm not sure what the open and close points are, but again, right here, not safe to be at. So this fire is just growing. As you, you heard from David, who's a firefighter, the fact that there's flames coming out of the top of this building means the inside is just engulfed in flames. So here, what we're trying to see um, is a lot of these people trying to control the scene and not so much put it out, but right here, I can show you one ladder truck over there um, is attacking that fire, trying to keep it under control, trying to keep it out of the neighborhood, trying to keep people safe here. But um, this is that scene right here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up for just a moment. Tune in to WKBW on TV. We're gonna be live with the report here from the scene as soon as we can. The anonymous California woman who accused Donald Trump in a federal lawsuit of raping her in the 90s when she was 13 has voluntarily dismissed her lawsuit, her attorney said late Friday. Lisa Bloom, the daughter of renowned women's rights lawyer Gloria Alred who was working on the plaintiff's counsel, posted messages to her social media accounts announcing the news. In them, she sends support to the anonymous woman, who was identified in the suit as Jane Doe. Doe had accused the Republican presidential nominee of raping her during the summer of 1994, allegedly in the home of Jeffrey Epstein, a businessman and convicted sex offender also named in the lawsuit. Jane Doe instructed us to dismiss her lawsuit against Trump and Epstein today, Blue wrote. Tough week for her. We wish her well. Every woman makes her own own choice about what is best for her, Bloom continued. Life's a journey. Most of us get stronger as we get older. I respect women. It was, in fact, a tough week for Doe. On Wednesday, she was set to go public for the first time in a press conference. 
But as a press conference was about to begin in Bloom's California offices, Bloom called it off citing threats to the plaintiff. In her original lawsuit, Dole claimed that, immediately following this rape, Defendant Trump threatened me that, were I ever to reveal any of the details of Defendant Trump's sexual and physical abuse of me, my family and I would be physically harmed if not killed. Alan Garten, Vice President and General Counsel for the Trump Organization, did not return a previous call for comment to people. But Garten has repeatedly and vehemently denied the allegations, telling the New York Daily News they were categorically untrue, completely fabricated and politically motivated. Jane Doe's legal team was beefed up in the last few weeks, with the additions of high-profile Florida defense attorney Cheney Mason, Casey Anthony's co-counsel, and veteran New Jersey civil litigation attorney Evan Goldman, according to court filings. Bloom was handling the media aspects of the case since both she and the plaintiff were on the West Coast, Goldman told People. United States District Judge Ronnie Abrams had ordered both sides to appear for an initial status conference on December 16 at U.S. District Court in Manhattan. The lawsuit sought $75,000 in damages.